problem solving, it's a topic that really uh, tends to throw students for a loop. Uh, this, this is what we're talking about here are things like word problems, right? where you're given a kind of open-ended problem uh, and you have to figure it out. And you, you have to figure out what it's talking about. You have to come up with an equation, solve the equation, and somehow turn that into an answer. And you know, it, it's something that a lot of students find challenging. Now, all textbooks, all algebra textbooks, introductory textbooks, uh, at some point they have a series of steps that are intended to kind of guide students through the process. And a lot of them I'm not a big fan of. Uh, they, they tend to just be a, a little too vague on a lot of points for me. So I have my own series of steps, my own strategy for problem solving. And it's based on you know, my years of experience as a software developer. Uh, there would be times when I would be asked uh, to go out and get a custom data set. Uh, some manager or director or VP wanted information about their part of the organization that for some reason wasn't being provided in an existing report. And, you know, the time I'd been with the company for over 10 years, I knew every database, had access to every database. Uh, so uh, quite often this request would land on my desk and I would have to figure it out. I'd have to say, okay, well, this these data elements I can get from this database and these elements from this one and I have to figure out how to combine them together and integrate and sort and uh, turn them into the final result that you know this person was looking for and my approach to problem solving that, that we're going to be discussing here is based on you know that business experience so for me uh, the process looks like this right it's got a half dozen steps um, we'll, we'll kind of walk through these each one at a time, talk about what you're supposed to be doing in each one. Uh, then we'll look at a couple specific examples and see how you can actually apply this. So the first thing I do is I look at it just from a very high level. What is the question about? Am I being asked about averages? Is this a, a geometry situation where we're talking about objects and areas or perimeters and distances? Um, you know, it, is it a kind of a chemistry question where we're, where we're mixing things together? You know, just at a very high level, what is it I'm being asked to think about here? So the second thing I do is I ask, okay, what do I know about this? What do I know about averages? What do I know about uh, the areas of, of rectangles and circles, whatever other figures are in the question? The, the next thing I do is, is I, I look at the information that was given to me in the question, and I organize it. I pull it out. There's often a lot of extraneous information, a lot of extra text that's involved uh, in a word problem. I, I'm, I'm trying to clear all of that out and just pull out the specific numbers. And usually I'll make a list, right, es especially if there's multiple uh, multiple values that we're talking about. I'll, I'll write them all just in a list at the side of the page. Uh, many years ago, uh, I, I took a physics class, uh, physics with calculus. This is what math professors do you know, for entertainment. Uh, and, and I had a whole notebook, a whole composition book, full of physics problems that I had worked out, and they all started the same way, with that list of values uh, over on the side of the page. This is also... Uh, a good opportunity to organize your information. If you're given a geometry, if it's a geometry question, for example, that involves objects, rectangles, squares, that sort of thing, draw a picture. Right? You don't necessarily have to make a table. Sometimes the easiest thing to do is to draw a picture and put all of the, your, your values into the picture. Uh, this is also an opportunity for you to, to double check the units on things. Sometimes you know, people who write these questions, they get cute. And they'll give you some numbers in feet, some numbers in inches, for example. Uh, this is the time when I, I would say, okay, look, I need these to be just in feet or just in inches. And I would convert everything so that it was in the same unit. All right, now the step four here is the key one. This is the one where I'm kind of, I'm looking at the formulas that I came up with in, in step two. And I'm looking at the information that I was given in step three. And I'm seeing, okay, where's the match here? Which formula matches the information that I'm given? 
right? Then hopefully, right, that that'll give me a path where I can combine the two together and get an equation that I can solve. All right. Now step five here. Step five is is the the poor lonely step. You really should stop and check your answer. Uh, this one gets skipped, right? And I, I mean, I'll I'll confess I've skipped this quite a bit in the past, right? When when I was you know doing homework problems and test questions. Um, however, it is it is an important one, right? That you should take the time to do. And then finally, the last step: be sure that you've answered the question, right? A, a number. The number is the solution to the equation. It's not the answer to a question. Right? Whenever you're doing this kind of word problem, the last thing you should do is go back and, and look at the question and say, okay, what was I asked? Right? If you were asked to find an area, for example, then I would explicitly answer the question just as if I had been asked this by you know, a manager or a director in a business. If I was asked to find an average, my, an my final answer would be the average is... 250 or, or whatever the numeric result is. All right, so let's take a step back here now. Let, let's see how we can apply this. All right, so I've, I've got a just kind of a very basic math question here. We have this person, and he has three test scores, 85, 92, and 87. And he wants to get an A, right? He wants that 90. So the, the question he's asking is, what grade does he have to get on his fourth and presumably final test in order to get that final average? All right, so let's kind of walk through the steps here. Right? What's the question about? Well, just at, at a very high level, this is a question about averages. I'm given numeric grades, uh, and I want to come up with their average score. All right, so step two, or step one here, let me put some notes in. Step one, uh, what is the question about? It's about averages. All right, so step two, what do I know about that? Well, I know... Uh, how to calculate an average. To calculate an average, I add all the numbers I'm given up, and I divide by the number of numbers. Okay, so let's, let's see. Now, let's keep going here. What information does the question give me? Well, it, it gives me three test scores, right? It gives me the first score, that's 85, and it gives me the second score, that's 92, and the third score, that's 87. You see, this is like my physics notebook now, right? Except I'm doing it on the right side instead of the left. Um, okay, now finally, the, one, one more important piece of information we always need to find. What are you asked for? What is it you're trying to come up with? And here, you really need to focus on the last sentence. In in a word problem or, or, a ma or even a... a, a business or science question. The last sentence is quite often the most important one in the whole thing because that's the one that tells you what it is you're trying to find. Right? What I know here is I'm trying to find uh, the fourth test score. So the fourth test score is something. I don't know. That's what I'm looking for. And I do know one other thing. I know my target average, right? My target average is 90. And let me add an A to my average formula. All right, so now, now compare these two. Compare the formula that I came up with in step two with the information that I have in step one. All right, so you notice I have all these X values over here, and I have all these X values in my formula. And I have an A value over, he over here, and I have an A value in my formula. All right, so let's, let's substitute numbers. Let's put 90 in here for A. My first X values are 85, 92, and 87. And I don't know the last one, so go ahead and let's leave that X of 4. What is N now? Well, N is the number of test scores. That's four. And that's what I needed. Now I have an equation, uh, an equation that I can solve. Right, so let's do that. Look, first I'm going to multiply both sides by four. I get 360 equals, and let's see, let's add these numbers, 85, 92, and 87. 
5 and 2 is 7, plus 7 is 14, uh, 264 plus x sub 4. All right, so I got one more step. Subtract 264 from both sides. And what do you get here? It's going to be x sub 4 equals... 96. Right, so there's the grade that he needs to balance out the other three. All right, so that was step four. All right, we combined two and three into, into an equation and solved it. So now step five, we need to check the result. All right, so you're going to take, you're, you're going to replace this x of four here. We have a number now, it's 96. So to check this, you're going to add up all four of these numbers and divide by four. And if you do that, it should come out to uh, 90. This, this, you should get that this is the right result. So we're not done. We came up with an equation that's great, and we solved the equation. That's great. We have not answered the question. The answer to the question is John needs 96 on his fourth test. There's the final, the final answer to our question. All right, so let's try another one here. Uh, more of a geometry problem. We have a pool. It's rectangular, and it's surrounded by a paved border. And I want to know the area of the border. All right, so step number one, what's the question about? Uh, it's about areas. It's a geometry problem. We have physical shapes, and we're asked to find uh, the area of them. All right, so let's see, what, what do I know about that? Well, I know we're talking about rectangles, right? So let's see, what's the question about? It's about areas. And what do I know about that? Well, specifically, we're talking about rectangles, and I know that the area of a rectangle is length times width. All right, so let, let's see what I can do with that. Step number three, what information does the question give me? Well... I'm not going to make a table this time. I'm talking about physical objects, right? Rectangles. So I'm going to draw that. I'm going to draw. You have to work with me here. My artistic ability is very seriously limited. So let's see. That'll be the uh, the outer paved area, and inside here we have right. Uh, so this is the pool. We'll do a little water here, right? This is the pool. And we have this paved area outside. So let's now I'm going to use the diagram to organize my information. All right, so the pool is 12 feet by 8 feet. And this paved area is a uniform 2 feet across. All right, so let's, let's see. Now, uh, sometimes I, I'm going to do some quick calculations here, some quick things that I can infer based on this. Uh, I know that this outer rectangle is 2 feet plus 2 feet plus 12 feet. So this, oh, excuse me, this is, the, uh, this is the 8 feet here. So it's 2 plus 8 plus 2. So this height here is 12 feet. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. This is 2 plus 12 plus 2, which is 16. All right, so finally, right, last question. What is it that I'm trying to find? Well, I'm trying to find the area of this section here. And that's a little problematic. I don't have a formula for this kind of strange section. All right, so now... We have to kind of go back to step two. So sometimes this, this gets a little circular. Uh, in geometry, we have a technique for finding the area uh, between two shapes, right? Between these two rectangles. So the way we do that is we take the area of the outer section and we subtract out the area of the intersection. And that's going to give us the area in between the two shapes. 
All right, so now I, I'm on to step four, right? I'm trying to combine what I know about rectangles with what I know about this diagram. Well, I know that uh, the area of a rectangle is length times width. So the area of the outer rectangle is its length times its width, and the area of the inner rectangle is its length times its, whoops, times its width. And I have numbers for all of those. So let's put numbers in here. The length of the outer rectangle is 16, and the width is 12. The length of the inner rectangle is 12, and its width is 8. All right, so there, now we, now we have right, numbers. Now I can just do some arithmetic. Let's see, uh, 16 times 12, that's 196. Uh, no, it's not. Sorry, that's what I give trying to do math in my head. Um, 16, sorry, I got to work it out now because I didn't do this in advance. Let's see. Uh, 16 times 12. Uh, there we go, 192. So this is 192 minus 96, which is, let's see, that's going to be uh, 90. Six. Really, it's half of it. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so comes out to 96. Now, that's not the answer. Right? We're not done. We have not answered the question. All right, so the answer to the question, I'm running out of a little room I, down here at the bottom, so let's jump up to the top. The area of the border is 96 square Feet, right? Always make sure uh, whenever you're given the area, uh, whenever you're given the answer, uh, that you always include the units.